Chapter Three of Bob's A Girl Detective. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Bob's A Girl Detective by Grace May North. Chapter Three Venturing Forth. When Roberta entered the breakfast room, she found Gloria and Lena May there waiting for her. In answer to her question, the oldest sister replied that Gwen would not unlock her door. Lena May had left her breakfast on a tray in the hall. We think she is packing to leave, Gloria sighed. The way Gwen takes our misfortune is the hardest thing about it. Bobs, who was ravenously hungry after her early morning ride, was eating her breakfast with a relish which contrasted noticeably with the evident lack of appetite shown by her sisters. At last she said, Glo, I'm not so sure all this is really a misfortune. If something hadn't happened to jolt us out of a rut, we would have settled down here and led a humdrum, monotonous life, going to teas and receptions, bridge parties and weekends, played tennis and golf, married and died, and nothing real or vital would have happened. But now, take it from me, I, for one, am going to really live, not stagnate or rust. Gloria smiled as she hastened to assure her sister, I agree with you, Bobs. I'm glad something has happened to make it possible for me to carry out a long-cherished desire of mine. I haven't said much about it, but ever since Catherine Delaney came home last summer, on a vacation, and told me about the girls of the East Side who have never had a real chance to develop the best that is in them, I have wanted to help them. I didn't know how to go about doing it, not until the crash came. Then I wrote Catherine, and you know what happened next. She found a place for me in the settlement house to conduct social clubs for those very girls of whom she had told me. Both of the listeners noted the eager, earnest expression on the truly beautiful face of the sister who had mothered them, but almost at once it had saddened, and they knew that again she was thinking of Gwen. Directly after breakfast, Gloria went up once more to the upper hall and tapped on a closed and locked door, but there was no response from within. However, the breakfast tray which Lena May had left on a near table was not in sight, and so at least Gwendolyn was not going hungry. It seemed strange to the two younger girls to be clearing away the breakfast things and tidying up the kitchen where, for so many years, a good-natured Chinaman had reigned supreme. "'I'm going to miss Sing more than any servant that we ever had,' Bobs was saying when Gloria entered the kitchen. There was a serious expression on the face of the oldest girl, and Bobs refrained from uttering the flippancy which had been on the tip of her tongue. Lena May, having put away the dishes, turned to ask solicitously, "'Wouldn't Gwen let you in, Glo?' "'No, I didn't hear a sound, but the tray is gone.' The gentle Lena May was pleased to hear that. "'Poor Gwen. She is making it harder for herself, and all of us,' Gloria said, then added, "'Are you girls ready to go with me? I'd like to get over to the city early, after the first rush is over and the midday rush has not begun.' Exultant, Bobs could not refrain from waving the dishcloth she still held. Hooray for us, she sang out. Three adventurers starting on they know not what wild escapade. Wait till I change my togs, Glow, and I'll be with you. Then, glancing down at her riding habit, unless this will do, she questioned her sister. Of course not, dear. We'll all wear tailored suits. It was mid-morning when three fashionably attired girls, for the first time in their lives, ascended to the Third Avenue elevated, going uptown. At that hour there were few people travelling in that direction, and they had a car almost to themselves. As they were whirled past tenements so close that they could plainly see the shabby furniture in flats beyond, the younger girls suddenly realised how great was the contrast between the life that was ahead of them and that which they were leaving. The thundering of the trains, the constant rumble of traffic below, the discordant cries of hucksters reached them through the open windows. It's hard to believe that a meadow lark is singing anywhere in the world, Bob said, turning to Gloria. Or well, that little children are playing in those meadows, the older girl replied. She was watching the pale, ragged children hanging to railings around fire escapes on a level with train windows. Poor little things, Lena May's tone was pitying. I don't see how they can do much playing in such cramped, crowded houses. I don't suppose they even know the meaning of the word, Bobs replied. They left the train at the station nearest the 77th Street Settlement. Since Gloria was to be employed there, she planned, starting from that point, to search for the nearest suitable dwelling. They found themselves in a motley crowd composed of foreign women and children, who jostled one another in an evident effort to reach the sidewalk, where, in two-wheeled carts, vendors of all kinds of things saleable were calling their wares. They must sell everything from fish to calico, Bobs reported after a moment's inspection from the curbing. The women who wore shawls of many colours over their heads, and who carried market baskets and babies, were, some of them, Bohemians, and others Hungarian. 
Few words of English were heard by the interested girls. I see where I have to acquire a new tongue, if I am to know what our future neighbours are talking about, Bobs had said, when suddenly, just ahead of them, a thin, sickly woman slipped and would have fallen had not a labouring man who was passing caught her just in time. The grateful woman coughed, her hand pressed to her throat before she could thank him. The girl saw that she had potatoes in a basket which seemed too heavy for her. The man was apparently asking where she lived, then he assisted her towards a near tenement. "'Well!' Bobs exclaimed. "'There is evidently chivalry among working men as well as among idlers.' At the crossing they were caught in a jam of traffic and pedestrians. Little Lena May clung to Gloria's arm, looking about as though terrorised at this new and startling experience. When, after some moments' delay, the opposite sidewalk was reached in safety, Bobs exclaimed gleefully, "'Wasn't that great?' But Lena May had not enjoyed the experience, and was quite evident to the other two that it was going to be very hard for their sensitive, frail youngest sister to be transplanted from her gardens, where she had spent long, quiet, happy hours painting the scenes she loved, to this maelstrom of foreign humanity. There was almost a pang of regret in the heart of the girl who had mothered the others when she realised fully, for the first time, what her own choice of a home location might mean to their youngest. Perhaps she had been selfish because of her own great interest in settlement work, to plan to have them all live in the crowded east side, but her fears were set at a rest a moment later when they came upon a group of children, scarcely more than babies, who were playing in a gutter. Lena May's sweet face brightened, and, smiling up at Gloria, she exclaimed, "'Aren't they dears? In spite of the rags and dirt, I'd love to do something for them.' "'I'd like to put them all in a tub of soap suds and give them a good scrubbing for once in their lives,' the practical Bobs remarked. Then she caught Gloria by the arm, exclaiming, as she nodded towards the crossing, "'There goes that chivalrous labouring man. He steps off with too much agility to be a ditch-digger, or anyone who does hard work, doesn't he, Glow?" The oldest sister laughed. "'Bob,' she remarked, "'I sometimes think that you are a detective by nature. You are always trying to discover by the cut of a man's hair what his profession may be.' Bob's hazel eyes were merry, though her face was serious. "'You've hit it, Glow!' she exclaimed. "'I was going to keep it a secret a while longer, but I might as well confess now the cat is out of the bag.' "'What cat?' Lena May had heard half of this sentence. She had been so interested in watching the excitement among the children caused by the approach of an organ-grinder. "'My chosen profession is the cat,' Bob's informed her, "'and I suppose my brain, where it has been hiding, is the bag. I'm going to be a detective.' Little Lena May was horrified. Detectives meant to her sleuths who visited underground haunts of crooks of all kind. I'm sure Gloria will not wish it, will you, Glow? Appealingly, the soft brown eyes were lifted and met the smiling gaze of the oldest sister. We are each to do the work for which we are best fitted, she replied. You are to be our little housekeeper, and that will give you time to go on with your painting. I was just wondering a moment ago if you might not like to put some of these black-eyed Hungarian babies into a picture. If they are clean, they would be unusually beautiful. Lena May was interested at once and glanced about for possible subjects, and so, for the time being, the startling statement of Bob's chosen profession was dropped. They were nearing the East River, very close to which stood a large plain brick building containing many windows. I believe that this is the settlement house, Gloria had said, when Bob's discovering the name over the door verified the statement. A pretty Hungarian girl of about their own age answered their ring, and admitted them to a big cheerful club room. Another girl was practising on a piano in the far corner. The three newcomers seated themselves near the door and looked about with great interest. Just beyond were shelves of books, Bob sauntered over to look at the titles. "'It's a dandy collection for girls,' she reported, as she again took her seat. It was not long before Miss Lovejoy, the matron, entered the room and advanced towards them. The three girls rose to meet her. Miss Lovejoy smilingly held out her hand to the tallest, saying in her pleasant, friendly voice, "'I wonder if I am writing, believing that you are the Miss Gloria Vandergrift who is coming to assist me.' "'Yes, Miss Lovejoy, I am. And these are my younger sisters, Roberta and little Lena May.' Then she explained, "'We haven't moved into town as yet. I thought it best to come over this morning and find a place for us to live. Then we will have our trunk sent and our personal possessions.' "'That is a good idea,' the matron said, then asked, "'Have you found anything as yet?' "'We thought, since we are strangers in the neighbourhood, that you might be able to suggest some place for us,' Gloria told the matron. After a thoughtful moment, Miss Lovejoy replied, "'The tenement houses in this immediate neighbourhood are most certainly not desirable for one's used to comforts.' However, on 78th Street there is a new model tenement built by some wealthy women, and it is just possible that there might be a vacant flat. 
You might inquire at the office there. You can take the shortcut path across the playground, and it will lead you directly to the model tenement. Thank you, Miss Lovejoy, Gloria said. We will let you know the result of our search. End of chapter 3